Sasha Haddad. I am a third year medical student and today we're going to answer one of the most exciting topics of medical school and probably one of the most Google questions in medical school, which is how do I study for step one and COMLEX level one? The first thing you should do is decide when are you planning on taking your exam. And if you're taking both step one and COMLEX level one, which is of course you have the MD and the DO exam. Once you decided on the date that you're going to take your exams, you're going to go ahead and register. It will take time to process because you have to put in your address, your name, your information, and you're going to have to pay a certain amount for each exam. And then they will allow you to choose the seat and the date on the calendar. I'm going to warn you, so heads up, I do suggest you start saving your money because both of those exams are very expensive and the board material and the preparation resources are going to cost you as well. So once you have made that commitment, you have registered for those exams, you paid and you picked those seats, you're going to put that on that beautiful calendar and you're going to start your marathon. I'm going to be very honest. This is going to be a very challenging time for you. So prepare yourself emotionally and physically for a roller coaster ride. Looking back, the reason why year two is very challenging is because from one aspect, you have your classes, you're still in class, you're still in school, you're taking your courses, you want to try and learn and maintain a good class ranking. And at the same time, you're trying to transition into board preparation so that once your pre-dedicated and dedicated time comes, you're not taken off guard. On a positive note, I'm still here. I made it to year three. I survived year two. I took my boards, I got my results, and I'm doing fine. I'm starting to prepare for my part two of boards. And you will make it as well. Okay, so I'm going to divide this into a timeline. What you should be doing now, assuming that you just started and you're still in year two and you're still in your classes, and then you're in a pre-dedicated period and then you're dedicated. And dedicated is the time off that your school gives you solely for the purpose of studying for your board examination. So what should you be doing right now? Assuming that you're still in your courses and you have midterms coming up and you have exams, the most important thing is of course learning. Learn as much as you can because this is going to save you time when dedication period comes. You don't want to start learning things fresh off the bat in that period. You want to learn things to the best of your ability now so that you can save time and review it later on. My recommendation for you is if you have a midterm coming up or a quiz or an exam, and let's say you are doing a cardiology or a GI, whatever the topic is, I would suggest that you start utilizing board prep material. For example, if you are doing pathology, start using, for example, pathoma for the pathology. If you are doing um, drugs for the renal system, why not try using Sketchy for those drugs in that renal system? That way, not only are you studying and learning for that course and that exam, but you're also supplementing your information with board relevant material. Let's go over the board preparation material. So what did I use in year two? I personally used the first aid book. I used Pathoma, Sketchy Farm and Sketchy Micro, as well as Pixerize. In addition to these, I used something called Anki. Anki is basically a flashcard application. And what I did is that I made a deck for my incorrects from the question banks that I used. And I also reviewed the flashcards for pharmacology as well as the uh, microbiology. These were my main resources for boards. And it's always the lesser, the better. If you are able to memorize microbiology and pharmacology from first aid alone, that's great news. And just a heads up that the sketchy pharmacology and microbiology do not cover all the farm and micro that first aid covers. So I do recommend you try to review and memorize the ones in the book. Other resources I used are Boards and Beyond, Osmosis, Dirty USMLE, and Sketchy Anatomist on YouTube. Now, when it comes to question banks, it's going to be a bit different depending on your program. For example, in my program, we had to do Kaplan questions. And so I did that every single night, but I use it mostly as like a flashcard type of material just to be exposed to the different types of questions. However, your basic and your most important question bank is UWorld. UWorld, UWorld, UWorld. If you're also taking the Comlex exam, I personally used the ComQuest question bank and I felt very comfortable with their questions because they were very similar in the structure and the style of that of the actual exam. 
the most important part of your board preparation are those questions and how you go about them. It's not enough to do the question. In your world, what you have to do is once you do the question, you have to learn and study from the answer choices, why you got it right, why you got it wrong, and study all the other options of that question. If you actually study and learn the questions and answers from your world, soon enough, you're going to recognize that it's an entire book on its own. So how are we going to incorporate these board relevant material in our schedule? Assuming that you're still in class, you still have midterms and exams coming up, what should you be doing now? Now is the perfect time to introduce board prep materials and integrate them with your study schedule. That means if you have a test that is going to test you on the medicine or the medications or the pharmacology aspect of the renal system, it's a good idea to start doing the sketchy farm of those renal drugs. Now that we have our resources, how are we going to incorporate them into our schedule? I'm going to tell you what I did and what worked for me might not work for you, but at least it gives you something to start with. I have three timelines. What should I be doing in the beginning of the year? What will I be doing in my pre-dedicated period? And what will I be doing in my dedicated period? I was lucky enough that my program went through system-based material. That means in the beginning of year two, let's say I was going through the psychiatry section or the system with my school, I would start utilizing Sketchy Farm for the psychiatry. I would do boards and beyond to learn the content and I would annotate and take notes in my first aid on the psychiatry chapter. And then for example, if we're doing the autoimmune pathology and related conditions, I would open my pathoma and I would do the associated chapters for those conditions in my book. As you can see, I tried to overlap my board material with the system starting my second year. I realized that using boards and beyond early in the year really helped me engage and learn my content and save time. Then when my dedicated period came, I didn't have to watch those videos. I already took notes. I just had to review them or speed through my video if I really needed to. Then my pre-dedicated period came and this is basically the period before the time off that you take to study for your exam. During my pre-dedicated period, this is when I wanted to basically take up a notch and start doing questions. And I recommend that you start doing your world questions, at least five to 10 questions a day on a certain system. So if you're learning cardiology, do 10 questions in your world on cardiology and take notes on your questions, whether you make Anki cards on those questions, or if you write your questions and answers on a paper, that's up to you. I personally took cards on my incorrects and I would review them through Anki. My goals of my pre-dedicated period was at least finish a full first pass of Pathoma and try to go through all the systems, at least a first pass through boards and beyond. In addition, I wanted to start feeling comfortable with using UWorld, understanding how it works and learning from that material as I went through. Sketchy Farm and Sketchy Micro do take a lot of time. If they happen to magically work for you, that's perfect, that's great. If not, don't worry. Again, if you're able to create categories and charts and learn from first aid, that's great too. It's whatever works for you. I personally did the videos over and over again in order to really memorize them and I did the cards for those videos on the Anki app. I really tried so hard in my pre-dedicated period to finish a first pass of Sketchy Farm and Sketchy Micro, but it really didn't work for me. I really wish I did, but I didn't have enough time. Finally, my dedicated period came along and it happened to me around the time when the pandemic hit and basically, you know, I lost my study spots, I lost my routine, I used to wake up early and try to go to the gym, I used to go to Starbucks and study or at a coffee shop, and all that just, you know, disappeared. And so I had to come back home and reestablish myself, I had to reestablish my study style, my learning environment, and that was a big challenge for me. Once dedicated period hit, my stress levels went up through the roof, and I tried to manage it as much as I could with whatever resources I had, I was very thankful to have the love and support of my family and friends and everything was online through Zoom meetings and phone calls. And I really did utilize Facebook Messenger as well as Zoom to study with my colleagues because I had no interaction. I really needed someone to study with. I need to see different faces. But again, you know, COVID-19 happened and we tried to make the most out of it. Personal suggestion, continue having a really good workout and eat really clean throughout because you still want to feed your mind and your body and your soul something positive to help you keep on going through this marathon. 
During that time, I utilized a widely available and free schedule for Step On a Level 1 online, and I will attach it in the link below. And I customized it so that it fits my needs. If I was very weak, let's say, in the NMSK section, I would invest more days in those sections. I would try my best to wake up at 6.30 a.m., go brew my coffee, bring my coffee to my desk, and start my year old questions at seven. My year old questions were 40 questions a day, mixed at all times, and they were timed because I wanted to prepare myself for the actual examination. It would take me, let's say, an hour to complete it, and the rest of that time, until 1 p.m., I'd be reviewing and studying my year old questions. And the way that I do it is that if I got a question wrong or right, I would review all the answer choices I would make cards on why I got it wrong. I would go to my first aid book and I would annotate what I learned. I would add the additional information from your world to my first aid so that in the end of the day, I can just review the chapters from the book itself. Don't rush the questions. The questions are so important for you to learn from. If you could do nothing during your entire board dedication period, do at least your world. Your world alone is so important. I can't stress this enough for you. If there's a concept in your world that you didn't understand, that's when you can go back to Boards and Beyond and review it. Or if it's in Pathoma, you go and study that section in Pathoma. After I'm done with my questions, I do have a lunch break. I take like an hour break. I go see my family. I have lunch. I come back. After my lunch, I come back and I study the system that I have due for the day. For example, when you open your first aid book, you have things divided by systems and you will divide your schedule by systems as well. So you're gonna have, let's say, a couple of days where you're gonna study cardiology. You're gonna have a couple of days where you're gonna study a GI. You're gonna have a couple of days where you're gonna study nephrology, biochemistry, physics, all those different sub, all those different systems and subjects you will have to create a schedule for. And only you know how much time you will need to take to complete them because you know your strength and you know your weaknesses. I know that you're very strict on time, but try not to skip any chapter in your first aid book. I say this because I look back and I really wish I spent more time in certain sections that I got tested on and they were things that I thought were very simple and very easy, but to my knowledge, looking back, I really wish I invested more time in those little mini chapters here and there in your first aid book. Since I didn't finish the sketchy farm and the sketchy micro, I really had to do as much videos and review as many cards as I could as I went through and my goal was to finish Pathoma second pass. It's very important, especially the first three chapters of Pathoma are very high yield. You will hear this term a lot, high yield. Everything's high yield once you hit your board dedication time. For those of you that aren't aware, there's something called Pixarize. And Pixarize is like Sketchy. So for those of you that love Sketchy, you might really like Pixarize. And for those of you that hate Sketchy, you might still consider taking a try on Pixarize, but again, do what works for you. And so Pixarize, is this incredible resource that is amazing for immunology and biochemistry. I discovered it late in my dedicated period and I really wished I had discovered it before because it worked extremely well for me for biochemistry and immunology. So after I studied that system review that I had for the day, I would take another break towards 5, 6 p.m. I would go work out, take a shower, have dinner, come back and that's when I would review my pathoma, my sketches, my cards, things that were very high yield and things that I was very weak in, I would try to review at night or at least have another pass at. Now you might ask, how do we know how we're doing? How do you know that we're prepared to take this test? This is why you have self-assessments on the NBMU website. Plan on taking at least minimum two to three assessments before your exam. Take one, in the beginning of your dedicated period to see how you score. And it's completely fine to score horrible on your first assessment and your second assessment. It's only until the last couple of weeks when you get really close to your board time when you see that progression in your score. So don't freak out, it's totally normal, it's okay. I'll cry with you, I'll give you napkins, but you will get through it because it will get better. Don't forget that your old also has two self-assessments. You have your old SIM 1 and your old SIM 2. Take the first one near the beginning of your dedicated period to see where you're at and take the last one a week before your board time because it resembles very closely to the actual score you can get. That means it's a good predictor of what you might actually score. During your 
dedicated time is when it's a good idea to start using ComQuest questions. And I say this not because it's a different question bank. Doing UWorld, First Aid and Pathoma, all the things that you will be doing for your step exam is going to really prepare you for your osteopathic exam. The only difference is the osteopathic manipulative medicine, which is the OMM. And for that, I recommend the Severus book. And the way to utilize it is during the year, try to cover a chapter a day so that once you get too dedicated, you had at least the first pass through, through the book. It's a very manageable and easy to read book. Do the questions after every single chapter because the questions will cover topics that the chapters did not really cover fully. I will also try to add two more links for you, which are for the visceral somatic points as well as your Chapman's points. There are two uh, available YouTube videos for them that did such a great job and very easy to learn. So don't forget to study for your OMM questions because a lot of us recognize and complain that there was a lot of unexpected questions about OMM in the past board examination. So they're either gonna hurt you or they're gonna help you. So prepare for them accordingly. Finally, as you get close to your last week, before your board examination, that's when you are going to be focusing solely on timed exams. Try to take 120 questions. These are three blocks of your world sections and review them throughout the days. That will be your highlight for the week. But don't forget about your mental health. It's so important to take care of yourself. I'm not gonna lie, you will break down. There are times when things are going to be very difficult and there, there's life, life happens. You're going to get curved balls from each direction. And when you're taking your board examinations and life hits you at the same time, it's okay to always push your exam if you have to. If you don't have anything else going on, don't push your exam, but you know, things happen in life. And if you have to, it's okay to push. Studying and preparing for these exams is like preparing for a marathon. You can't run a sprint on the first day. You need to train your mind and you need to train your body to take and sit for those examinations. You will face difficult times. It is probably one of the most challenging times that you're going to experience, but you made it this far and you will get through it because everybody else did. Your self-worth is not determined by an examination. You are worth so much more than that. So take care of yourself and let's get to it. You can do it. You just have to believe in yourself, invest the time, invest the energy, take breaks, invest in yourself along the way. It's okay to take one day off a week or half a day off a week. Take whatever time you need to collect yourself and get back on it. I believe in you. And if you need any help getting through it, let me know. I'll try my best to help you in any way that I can. Hence, I leave you with this. You are not always going to be motivated every single day. The key to getting through it is having self-discipline and committing to the plan regardless of the tough days to come. Take care, good luck. I'm always here for you if you need me and I'll see you on the next one.